But now let's go a little deeper and see the diagnosis of the heart. Very important that we do this. And if you have a disease, a physical disease, you go to the doctor, before he can treat you and really resolve your problem, he needs a proper diagnosis. He may put you through a battery of tests to diagnose what's really the root problem. He's not gonna just treat a surface problem. He wants to know what's causing that. And in the spiritual life, this is so critical, we need to know what causes our problems. Why do we do what we do? And people say, stop this. You're angry, go to an anger management class. You're this, deal with it this way. You have an addiction, go here and there. But that is treating symptoms. What's the diagnosis? What's causing anger? What's causing greed? What's causing jealousy? Why do we commit adultery? Here's the answer. Jesus diagnoses the heart. He cuts right through it. And the key passage of scripture is in Mark chapter seven. And I would encourage you, as you're watching this video presentation, hearing this lecture, that you get your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter seven. Let me paraphrase part of it. Jesus was with his disciples and they encountered a group of Pharisees. The Pharisees had noticed that Jesus' disciples did not wash their hands before they ate. And they were big on ceremonial cleansing, the Pharisees. And they confronted Jesus and they said, we noticed that your followers did not wash their hands before they ate. And Jesus looked at them and he said, you know, Isaiah the prophet was right. You worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. You're all concerned about the externals. I'm concerned about the internals. I'm concerned about your heart. And Jesus went on and began to talk to them about the heart. And then Jesus called the crowd together. He called the crowd around him. And Jesus said this. Jesus said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside of a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it's what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, the disciples asked him about this parable. And Jesus said to his disciples, are you so dull? Don't you get it? And we can be right there with the disciples. We don't get it. I didn't get it for years. Many of you, I'm sure, have not gotten it. So Jesus goes ahead and he elaborates. He said, don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach then out of his body. He went on and said, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. Now watch this. This is a critical two verses. Jesus said, for within, out of the heart, come. And then Jesus lists 13 things. This is not an exhaustive list. It's indicative of what comes out of the heart. Every evil, every foul thing, every habit, every addiction, its source is in the heart. And Jesus gives 13 things. And what's intriguing about this, as I said, it's not exhaustive. It's indicative of the kinds of things that are in our heart. And I've looked at this list very carefully because he mixes 13 things together. Some of them that you and I would say are horrible sins, and they are. Others, we would say, well, that's not so bad. Jesus said, they're all bad. They all come out of the same place. But I separated them out for our presentation. There are what I call, what the scripture calls, sinful attitudes. These are inward. 
These are things that man does not necessarily see. But you said these come out of the heart. Let me quickly go through seven of them that Jesus specifically names that come out of the heart. Evil thoughts. Where do they come? Not out of your mind. Have you ever had an evil thought? I'm sure you do. I've had times where a thought comes into my mind. I said, where did that come from? That evil, vile thought didn't come out of my mind, came out of my heart. They originate in the heart, not the mind, evil thoughts. Secondly, he said greed comes out of the heart. Greed is simply never being satisfied with what you have, always wanting more. And I know people that are driven by that, driven by greed. Where does that come from? We say, oh, it comes from their upbringing. They were poor, and now they are really driven to amass a lot. But basically, greed, Jesus says, comes out of the heart. Malice. What is malice? It's a desire to harm other people, harm them verbally, harm them physically. Where does that come from? The heart. Deceit. Uh, that word deceit comes from a word that means uh, that uh, comes from a word of means bait, something cunning, deceiving. He said that comes from the heart. When we try to deceive people, put a little twist on something, not give them the straight story. He mentions lewdness. It's a person that resents all discipline and all restraints. No sense of decency or shame. Envy. Wanting what other people have. Their success, their happiness, their car, their house, their spouse. Where does that come from? The heart. Arrogance, that's another attitude. But showing yourself above others, contempt for other people, feeling you're better than everyone else, comparing yourself. Why do we do that? Where does that come from? The heart. Now those are attitudes primarily. Those are inward, sometimes man don't, people don't see that. Man looks on the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. He knows if your heart's greedy, envy, jealousy. Other people may not. But then there are sinful actions. These are outward. These are the ones men observe and get all upset about. Sexual immorality. The word there is the word in the Greek porneia, from which obviously we get our English word pornography. But it really means every kind of sexual a vice that you can think of. It's a very broad term, not just pornography as we know it, but any sexual misbehavior. And Jesus said that comes from the heart. Theft, taking what doesn't belong to you. What drives a thief? His heart is not right. Murder, taking an innocent life. Adultery, having a sexual involvement with someone that's not your spouse. Slander, insulting man or God. Your words, people hear that, they're slander, and I've heard people, and you have too, blaspheming God, slandering other people. Well, your words are a gauge of what's going on in your heart. When you hear someone slandering, speaking with foul language, blasphemy, that's a gauge of what's happening in the heart. Then it mentions folly. That's playing the fool, doing stupid things that make no sense at all. The point here is when your heart isn't right, nothing is right. You won't necessarily manifest all these behaviors. There may be others. As I said, this list is just a sampling, just to give us a feel of what comes out of the heart. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, it talks about sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit. These categories can be sins of the spirit, and some of them are sins of the flesh, but they all come from the heart. And if we ever want to win the behavior battle, you have behaviors you're battling, and you want victory over those behaviors, you must first win the battle for your heart. And oftentimes we try to Stop one behavior and we start another behavior. We get this out of control and that pops up. 
I've had people say to me, do you ever get it all together? Not if you're just chasing behaviors around, but if we get to the heart of the matter, then we have a good opportunity to get that freedom that God wants us to have. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.